guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. This video is the part 1 video of your 5.2 liquids. And in this video, we are going to discuss something very simple, talking about the property of liquids. And I believe many of you actually have come across property of liquids somewhere during your science classes, okay? So we are going to look into 6 different properties of liquid. I believe many of you have come across all this property of liquid and you might already know what they are. But in here, we are not only learning the property of the liquid. Mainly, we are learning why the liquid behave that way. Okay? So don't only tell me that liquid don't have a shape, it will follow the shape of the container. Liquid will have a fixed volume. We not only want the property of liquid, we want you to explain the property of liquid. So make sure you can explain why the property behave like that, okay? So first and foremost, let's look at the shape. And everybody knows that liquid don't have a defined shape. It will definitely take up the shape of the container. That's why when you have a bottle of carbonated drink and you pour into your cup, you realize that it will take the shape of the cup, right? But the question again, why? Why liquid don't have a definite shape? The reason because of the intermolecular forces between your particles over here are not strong enough to hold them in a rigid place. Which means the intermolecular forces in the liquid is not strong enough, it's not strong like the solid where we can hold the molecule in a very specific place. That's why the liquid molecule can slide past each other. That's why your liquid can flow, okay? Because between the molecule, they are intermolecular forces, but they are not strong enough. That's why they can pass through each other. They are still bonded, they are still attracted to each other, but they can slide through each other over that. Like that, okay? That's why your liquid can flow and it will fit into the shape of its container, okay? Simple. Next, look at volume. So volume, liquid will have a definite volume, it will have a fixed amount of volume. If I have a 500 milliliter over here from your bottle of carbonated drink, no matter where you pour it into, you will still have 500 milliliter. The 500 milliliter will not change because the liquid having a definite volume. So the same reason why the liquid having definite volume. It's because the intermolecular force, again, are strong enough to control the movement of the liquid. If you remember just now, liquid particles, your liquid molecule, they are having intermolecular force of attraction. But they are not strong enough. Alright, that's why in the shape, it can slide to each other. Over here, in the volume, they are intermolecular forces, even though it's not strong enough to hold them in a fixed position but it's strong enough to control their movement. So you cannot move anything further from your friend because you have the intermolecular force of attraction. So that's why when you have a bottle of carbonated drink and a cup and you pour your carbonated drink into your cup, it will flow accordingly, okay? That is the reason why liquid can have a fixed volume, okay? Next, compressibility. So can your liquid be compressed? I would say your liquid can be compressed, but it's very, very hard to compress compared to your gas. Why? Because in your gas, you have a lot of empty spaces between the gas particle, right? But in the liquid, the empty spaces are very, very little. Why? Because the liquid molecule are closely packed together compared to your gas. So when they are closely packed to each other, there are very little empty spaces. You can compress the liquid, but I would say it's really, really hard to compress a liquid. Okay? It's almost incompressible. The reason is only because the empty spaces between the liquid molecule is too small. Okay? Compared to your gas, your gas is very easy to compress because in your gas, there is a lot of empty spaces. Remember that? Next diffusion. So, can your liquid diffuse? Oh yes, your liquid can diffuse quite readily but it's much slower than your gas. The same reason, empty spaces between your liquid molecule. So, in the liquid molecule, 
They are arranged more closely than the gas, as we all know. That's why the empty spaces in the liquid is also less compared to your gas. Okay? And at the same time, the liquid molecule also has a lower kinetic energy than the gas, which means in the liquid, you will move slower. And when you move slower, when your gas particle moves slower and have less empty space, what happened? All this also resulting in your liquid molecule having a stronger intermolecular force of attraction. So when your liquid molecule having a stronger intermolecular force of attraction, it will then restrict the intermolecular force of attraction, will then restrict the liquid to diffuse freely. Okay? In the other words, can your liquid diffuse? Yes, your liquid can diffuse, but it's much slower than the gas. And the reason, we always need to know why. This is the reason why your liquid diffuses slower than your gas. Alright? Simple. So next, let's look at viscosity. So what is actually viscosity? It's actually a measurement that we use to measure the resistance of the liquid to flow. So in the other words, the greater the viscosity, the slower that it flows. So when the viscosity is very high, all right, it means your liquid is very hard to flow. All right, when the liquid is very hard to flow, means it's very slow, okay? So high viscosity means flow very, very slow. And next, what will be the factor affecting your viscosity? How can I make my liquid flow faster or slower? Simple. We have three factors affecting the viscosity. The first one, intermolecular force of attraction. The second, molecular mass. The third, the temperature. Okay, so let's say my viscosity right now is very high. And we know that viscosity is directly proportional with the intermolecular force of attraction. So in the other words, my intermolecular force of attraction also very high because they're directly proportional. But why directly proportional? When the intermolecular forces is very high, it means that your liquid particles and your liquid particles over here having a strong intermolecular force of attraction, which means the liquid particle will be held strongly. Okay? When they are holding very strongly, what happened to the ability to flow? The liquid will then very hard to flow because the intermolecular forces is extremely strong. When the liquid decided to flow, the intermolecular forces will pull them back. So when the intermolecular forces is very high, it will flow very slow. So when it flow very slow, which means the viscosity increase. See that? Okay, simple. And the viscosity is also directly proportional with the molecular mass. That is something to do with your intermolecular forces. The reason is, when your molecular mass increase, the intermolecular forces also increase. So when your molecular mass is very high, that means your intermolecular forces also very high. That's why they will flow very slow and your viscosity become very high. Okay? Last but not least, your viscosity will be inversely proportional with the temperature. So your viscosity over here will be inversely proportional with the temperature. Let's see why. When the temperature is very high, let's say, the kinetic energy of your liquid also become very high. When the kinetic energy is very high, your liquid particles will tend to move faster. So when it moves faster, what it means? It means that it will flow faster. When it flow faster, it means the viscosity over here is very low. Therefore, when the temperature is high, the viscosity is low. That's why the viscosity is inversely proportional with the temperature. The reason is because of kinetic energy. The higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy, the faster the molecule move. When the molecule move very fast, it will flow very fast. That's why the viscosity decreases. Okay? So this is the three 
factor affecting your viscosity and make sure you can explain that. All right. Last but not least, we are going to look at your surface tension. You should know that your liquid having a surface tension. But what is actually surface tension? The surface tension means your liquid will actually have an elastic film on the surface. And this is proven by all the pictures that I have on the screen. Why your insects can be floating on the liquid like that? Why do we have this droplet of water on the leaf? Why we can form a droplet of liquid over here? That is all because of surface tension that we have for a liquid. So the question is, why liquid can have an elastic film on the surface? Let's see why. So in a liquid, there is a lot of molecule. And the molecule within a liquid will be pulled by the intermolecular forces equally in all directions. So this is the molecule of our liquid that's sitting within the liquid. They're in the center of the liquid. Can you see that? And if the molecule is located in the center of the liquid, you will then have intermolecular force of attraction from all directions. Because you are located in the center of the liquid, you are surrounded by the other's molecule. Can you see that? You are surrounded by other's molecule. That's why you will experience intermolecular forces from all direction. But what happened to the molecule at the surface? For the molecule at the surface over here, all right, the molecule that located at the surface of the liquid will only experience the downward and sideway intermolecular forces. So if you're located on the surface of the liquid, you will only experience the sideway and also the downward. You won't experience the upward of the intermolecular force of attraction because you don't have molecule on the upward. That's why you will only experience the sideway and the downward. And that will cause the intermolecular forces become not balanced. And that intermolecular forces that are not balanced will cause the surface of your liquid to tighten like an elastic film. So you can see over here. So why we form a droplet of water because of this surface water molecule or the surface of any liquid to experience the same thing. You will form an elastic film because you only experience intermolecular forces on the sideway and also downward. So when you only experience the sideway and downward, you will tend to pull towards the downward and sideway only. That's why you form an elastic film on the surface of your liquid. Okay, so the surface tension is because of the molecule at the surface of a liquid is not experience a balanced intermolecular force of attraction. They only experience the intermolecular force of attraction from the downwards and the sideways. And the intermolecular forces that are not balanced will then cause them to form a tightened elastic film on the surface of your liquid. Okay? And that is your surface tension. Alright? And your surface tension can be affected by a few factors. The first factor that can affect your surface tension is your intermolecular forces. And the intermolecular forces is directly proportional with the surface tension. Which means the stronger the intermolecular forces, the stronger the surface tension. And I think that is quite makes sense. Because if the intermolecular forces is very strong, pulling the liquid molecule downward and sideways, then the elastic film or the surface tension that you produce will eventually be extremely strong over here because of the strong intermolecular force of attraction, okay? And the second factor that will be affecting your surface tension is your temperature and they are inversely proportional, which means when the temperature is very high, your surface tension will be very low. Okay, that is again because of the kinetic energy. When the temperature increase, the kinetic energy will increase. And when the kinetic energy increase, the molecule will move faster. Imagine your liquid molecule, it keep vibrating and moving over that. So the intermolecular forces will become weaker because you keep moving. 
therefore the surface tension will decrease okay so your surface tension will be stronger when you have a stronger force of attraction okay and your surface tension will be weaker when the temperature increase so that is the two factor that will be affecting your surface tension in liquid all right so that is everything about the six property that we discuss in your liquid and make sure you know why the property behave like that and also the factor affecting your property okay so make sure at the end of this video you're able to explain the property of the liquid you are not only required to state the property of liquid you are required to explain the property of liquid and also explain the factor affecting the property of liquid so i hope this video helps you to explain that if you still have any question drop it in the comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can make sure you like the video subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching i'll see you again in the next video tunepocket.com 